Michigan. Mr. Kraut is 87? 87, right. 4433 Shaner Road, apartment 122. Date of birth is January the 28th, 1923. 29th. January the 29th. 29th. Right. 1923, right. My name is Dave Brusso, and I will be the interviewer, and Mr. Jim Buckley and Ann Bartlett, Bartlett will be the videographer. Mr. Kraut. Would you state for the record the branch of service that you served? I was in, I was uh, drafted in the United States Army. Okay. All right. Let's start at the beginning and take back to when you were in high school. I, I assume that's when you got drafted. Ah. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Ah. Uh, let me think. Uh, the uh, no, I I uh, I never I never finished high school. They okay. threw me out. I'm that I'm that proud of that. But uh, they did. Uh, and uh, uh, so I went out. Mr. Wolf did me a place. She did. He didn't know it. He was my counselor at Denby High School. Denby High School is where I went. And he did me a very big favor. And he said, Norman, get get out of here. Uh, and I walked right out of that place, and I mean walked. I walked right out of that place and walked down to, and I was lucky I walked down to Shaner and Eight Mile Road and got myself a job. I, I, and the thing was, is I talked to some German guy. He was a German, good looking. You should have seen the beautiful hat he had. And he had, it was Warner Air. My first job was at Warner Aircraft. And uh, I, well, the thing is, is at Denby High School, I learned how to run a milling machine and a shaper and a lathe, so I knew something about machines in that. So that's why I got the job over there. What grade were you in when you left school? Uh, tenth grade. Tenth grade. Yeah. Uh, I was not a I was not a very good student, bad student, <clears throat> but uh, I just hated school. Uh, but. Uh, uh, so how long did you stay at that job? Uh I stayed one year. I was I ran a milling machine. It was a production job. Uh, we made. Uh, I really don't know. They, we made. Uh, they were brakes. Brake, uh, brakes for airplanes, as far as I know. Uh, I used to. Uh, uh, they were the things that I cut with a milling machine. Were uh, magnesium. Uh, I found out later that magnesium is very will burn really. A terrible fire from magnesium, but anyhow, we I used to cut it with the milling machine, and uh, I stayed there for about a year, and uh, I got to know a lot of old old guys. They were they were all older than I was because I was only I was 19 years old, and used to go over to their house and drink wine and all that stuff. I remember some of the old guys, and uh, and for some reason I uh, I decided I I, I would have gotten a I would have got one year's uh, vacation, but I was so dumb that I never even, never even thought about it. And I, so I decided I had enough of, of uh, Warner Aircraft. So I went over to, uh, to uh, Carboloy. Carboloy was over on Eight Mile Road, and uh, got a job over in Carboloy. And I didn't stay very long because you couldn't even hear, you couldn't even hear each other. And the guy was trying to tell me how to run a machine. And I couldn't even I couldn't even hear him. It was so damn much noise, and that didn't last. I don't know how long I stayed. I don't know if I stayed a couple of days or what, but I got out of there real quick. And uh, and then I heard about uh, I heard about uh, uh, the uh, uh, Willow Run. I, I decided. Now Willow Run's a long, Willow Run's a long way off. Uh, uh, and I I did have a car. I had a car. I bought a car. My first car for six hundred bucks. 
and some guy that was working right at Warner Aircraft there uh, uh, lent me $600. He, we didn't even know each other that much. And he lent me $600 to buy that. Uh, it was a 1941 Ford. It was a year old, 600 bucks. It was a black beauty. Oh, it was a nice. And uh, uh, my first, I remember my, I never knew how to drive a car. And uh, I remember Frank, Frank Banks was, Frank Banks was the guy that sold it to me. And Frank, uh, Frank t was showing me how, and I remember I was shaking like hell. Why was I shaking? I was scared to death driving that car. Do you remember <laughs> what year this was now? 19, 1940, was it 1940, what, 42? 42. 1942, yeah. Were you aware of the war at the time? And uh, oh, yeah. My dad, my dad used to listen to it, just like I told you, Father Coughlin. Oh, oh I yeah. know there was a war going on. Oh, yeah. But besides that, I used to always be at the Ramona Theater. Ramona Theater, what did they have? You know, they had the, their uh, the newsreels. newsreels and that. Oh, yeah, I knew all about the war. Oh, yeah, I knew there was a war going on. Did and, he listen uh, to Gabriel Heater? No. You remember oh, that he? Name? No. Gabriel oh, Heater? Yeah, I, I remember the name. No, my dad didn't. I told you he was a great one for Father Coughlin. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, and my, dad, uh, and my dad liked going to bars, and he liked playing po uh, euchre. He's a great euchre player, and uh, if you ever were going to find my dad, my mother used to send me. I had I had five sisters and a brother, and uh, and uh, my dad was always in Cleese over to Cleese. Cleese was a bowling uh, uh, was a, a bowling alley and also a bar, and my dad spent lots of time over there playing euchre, and my mother used to send me over there, and uh, I'd come over there, and my dad would buy me. Uh, Rock and rye, and so, and then after uh, that, my then my mother would send some of my sisters over there to get me and my dad. <laughs> I <don't really> remember <laughs> that. <laughs> and it used to, and then we used to go. To, uh, I used to go to Assumption Grotto. I went to Assumption Grotto. Was baptized and everything. Uh, I was born. Uh, I was born over on seven 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 Old Ferry. I remember that old school, and uh, Rose School was right across the street from it. And uh, I remember seeing one of my old, uh, my grandmothers, and that's about the only grandmother I ever saw. Never saw a grandfather. And uh, uh, I, I remember my Aunt Minnie, uh, that's who my dad, uh, who won, um, uh, Edwin Myers. I don't know what he was. I, know, I don't know if he was a cousin or what he was, but he, Aunt Minnie brought him up. and. Uh, how did you manage to get out of the draft for so long after you got out of high school? Well, you were. Well, they didn't. Uh, you were well, they in, didn't, in a defense They didn't start plant. it. Ah, no, 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 no. They. I belong to a gang of guys, and uh, no, I don't recall. I don't recall them ever pushing anything like that. No, it, that's all I remember is we were drafted, and that was it. And, uh, and and then I had my job at Hudson. I got a job at uh, the, that's where I ended up at Hudson Motor Car, and I ended up as a as a uh, cutter grinder. I was making two dollars and fifty cents an hour when I was a cutter grinder. I was making good money, and uh, uh, so you're at Hudson, and then you got drafted. Yeah, well, I knew a gang of guys over in Lindhurst and Celestine, and we all, I remember, I think, I don't know if anybody ever joined or not, really. And all of us were, we, well, we worked at Hudson Motor Car, mm -hmm. lots of the guys. It's like I started it. The other guy started at Hudson, and they said, come on over, Norm, we got good money over here. And I said, gee, I don't even know how to run that. Don't you worry, we'll, we'll teach you how. So I went over there, I got a job, and, uh, uh I stayed there until until I was drafted, and drafted like the other guys, and uh, that was about it. Yeah. Did you have a choice of where you went? I think uh, my vision. I had glasses, so that's why I couldn't get in get anything, and I wasn't smart enough to get in anything else. So I was just drafted. That's all. And then the other choice. What choice? I, I did not have did any not. other. I did not have any other. Okay, so you you got drafted. What what was it like after you got drafted? Oh, I remember I got. Uh, you remember uh, boot camp? Oh, oh yeah, at uh, 
Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, I can remember talking to some of those old guys. In fact, I remember eating some of the food the old guys had uh, made. And they had pies and all that stuff. And I thought, gee, what a beautiful place this army is. And before you know it, the old men, they got, they, I think they left them go. They left them go. They didn't need them for the war or something like that. They were too old. And, uh, and it changed real quick from good food to lousy food. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then from, from, from Battle Creek, I went to uh, North Carolina, took up basic training. Yeah. How was that? Fine. I had no problems <clears throat> with, with the Army. Uh, I, in fact, I think I enjoyed the Army, you know. It's something different. It makes a man out of you, you yeah. know. And, uh, well, I think I became a man when my mother died before. I, I think that's what broke, uh, not, not really, I imagine it broke my heart, but my mother died before my 18th birthday. Mm. And, uh, and how much I love my mother, I really don't remember, because I never talked. I never talked to my mother. My mother would say, "Get the," you know, she was glad to get rid of me because I had such goddamn much energy. I used to drive my mother nuts, and uh, I, I, in fact, uh, uh, what do you call it? Disease like uh, ADD? No, it's. Uh, I'm just uh, hyper. Hyper, yeah, hyper. I'm just hyper kid, you know. And my mother is glad to just get out and get lost. Just you know, if my mother would have had to just fall and walk in front of a bus or something like that, you know. But yeah, uh, no, she never said anything like that, you know. I, I know my mother loved me, but uh, but I really never got to know it, and I never really talked to anyone. My mother and father never talked to me, never got any advice from anybody, absolutely nothing. And uh, I just found out my own way. Well, I think my religion. Can, I think being that being born a Catholic, I knew it, I like religion. I enjoyed religion. In fact, I thought maybe after I I, I wanted to become a uh, a uh, become a uh, missionary and go over there because I was the nuns taught me about the Chinese how the Chinese mistreated everybody, take baby girls and throw them out in the street and all that. So I knew I knew what was going on in this world, you know, and. Uh, and, yeah, and they convinced me. I don't think much of the Catholic Church now, so, uh, but uh, that's my opinion. But uh, can you recall some experiences at boot camp? Oh yeah, uh, I remember how we got out of it. We used to get out of it. Cut, it clipped the. We had a special place over. We clipped the wires, and we used to sneak out and go into Wilmington, and. Uh, how 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 we got a ride there? I don't remember that, but I know we got into North Carolina, and uh, what did we do? I don't think there was any. I don't. We oh we walked. That's right too. Yes, we walked because I could. That's what I was remember. I remember about North Carolina walking. Well, even that bivouac and all that stuff. We walked down the street. We're walking down the street, and here these old ladies are on the porch smoking pipes. I thought, holy <laughs> mess. Look at that old lady. She's smoking a pipe. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but. Uh, Did they teach you any skills while you were in boot camp? No, how to handle a gun in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we used to have target practices out in the, uh, in the ocean, shooting that, uh, shooting that airplane uh, that was carrying a. Uh, Big sleeve. Uh, a sleeve, yeah, and uh, they taught us pretty good because we used to shot that 40 milli pretty good. I don't remember being on a four, uh, 50 caliber. I ended up on a 50 caliber machine gun. Well, we we landed, uh, we were in uh, over to England, and then from England we went over to the land at Omaha Beach, I had seven you know, days after D-Day. After boot, what happened after boot camp? Where did you get assigned to then? After boot camp? We went to to uh, the in North Carolina to uh, to uh, the big uh, the big camp. Okay. Any any skills they were teaching you there, or anything you recall? Skills? No. I don't even remember. I really. Uh, How long were you there? Didn't seem that long. So from there you got shipped over to England. Well, we I ended up at Fort Fisher from North Carolina. I ended up at Fort Fisher, and then uh, uh, and then we went to uh, 
to uh, North Carolina. Uh, uh, I'm getting confused here. To England. Then we went to England. We landed. Uh, we landed. I remember when I landed on the barge. I was on the barge, and seven days after D-Day, and uh, oh my, uh, and uh, uh, I can. Re you know the thing was is I always thought. <coughs> We let, oh, I can remember the barge dropping and we went out and I was I was on a half track with 450s on it. And uh, Omaha Beach, I remember Omaha Beach. But I'd be darned if I don't remember the bluff. I don't. I always thought that we just went straight up, I know. So you got I on to Omaha, beach. but that was a week or so after? Seven days after D-Day. Wow. And, uh, what and was that Saint like? Lowe. That was St. Lowe. What was that like? Well, I was young and dumb and it, I wasn't scared. I was not scared about because I was, I, I, as soon as I put my time on guard duty, I went out looting. I would go all by myself. I was so stupid and not scared. I went out looting to see what, the, what I could find. I remember the first place at St. Lowe, we were dug in the, I can see that place right now. We were dug on the side of this hill. And on the other side, the Germans were shooting at us with 88s once in a while. And uh, down below was this big field. Oh, it was a beautiful place for the Germans to pick off all our guy, infantry guys coming through those fields, man, they can pick them off so easy. And then besides these hedgerows, oh, those hedgerows are absolutely horrible. I remember going up to this one and I looked, holy cripes, I knew there was, it was a German bunker. And I knew there was dead Germans in there and I wanted to go in there and see if I could get in. And I said, no, you dummy, you better not like the booby traps or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I never did. I never got any, uh, oh, I, got, I picked up a lots of, in those days, you could pick up rifles and all that stuff and ship them babies home. I found uh, 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 a uh, parachute. You know, parachutes are made out of silk. So I used to wrap up the guns and send them to my sister uh, over at college. And uh, she got lots of my stuff. I'd, I'd send, I, in those days, you could send a, I remember some guy trying to send a jeep, jeep home, for Christ's sake. Oh, well, that, that <laughs> was happening, yeah. but they do it in pieces. Yeah, in pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He yeah. tore the whole thing apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they, uh, they finally caught that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I sent a lot. Oh, I mean, just like guys sending grenades home, for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, God, how stupid can you be? But, uh. I never send any live ammo or anything like that. I mean, that's stupid. It's just the guns. I send a, I, I had a German, uh, I regret that I ever got rid turned that in like a dummy. Uh, Italian Beretta machine gun. I had that baby. My kids thought, man, that was great, Dad. I used to hang that up in, the, in their bedroom up there. And uh, like a dummy, they were talking about, somebody talked me into giving the darn thing up. And I imagine it's in some cop's basement. <laughs> So, uh, but, uh, no, I had a good time. I, I so how long myself. did you spend there in England? And I then, don't know. And I, then I, Omaha I, Beach, I where did I, you go I from there? I, I thought we spent about five or six months in England. Okay. And uh, uh, I remember first place we were in Liverpool. Uh, I went out and I remember uh, meeting, this, uh, meeting this young uh, English girl and uh, she took me over to her house and we had meat pie. Uh, she, she gave me some meat pie. And uh, that's the first time I ever saw her and that was about the only woman I ever went out with. And, uh, but that was at, uh, yeah, Liverpool. And. Uh, when you got to Omaha then, Beach, but, where did you go from there? We, uh, we were uh, landing in St. Lowe. Our first one was in St. Lowe. Then where? And then, see, from then on, don't ask me, because I don't remember. I, it's all I know is I, uh, I was on a half, half track. We dug holes. I dug so many holes, it was unbelievable. And, uh, uh, and then I used to, uh, I used to go with a, we used to get on the red ball. I used to be assistant truck driver, and we'd get on that red ball and go flying on down, and we'd take supplies. We were always carrying supplies. Wow, wow. Always on there, always moving. And uh, That was go, a long haul, wasn't it? Oh, uh, we, we were always hauling something. I was, I remember the day of, day of first uh, day, uh, 
I was in Paris the day after the day after it was liberated. Really? Oh yeah, and uh, uh, I got a haircut. <laughs> Six bucks I paid for a haircut. Wow. Uh, over in in uh, and uh, I remember we went out at night and uh, we were looking for some women and uh, uh, I found this I found this one I found this one woman and. Uh, Oh, I wanted to tell you about when, when we were over in England, we went out, when we were in Liverpool, England, we went out uh, uh, with the guys, and uh, it was dark, I mean, yeah, there was no lights or anything like that, and uh, remember we were in Liverpool uh, with the guys, and uh, the English girls used to come by us, and they'd look at us, and they'd take a real good look, and they'd try to find out what, what color you were, and uh, if you are white, Get lost. Really? They were looking for black guys. No kidding. Because black guys used to, I don't know if it was their penis, but it was mostly, not that, it was mostly money because they money. spent money. Another thing over there, they took our guns away from us when we were over in Liverpool. There was a separation of a creek. The blacks were on the other side. And uh, if they didn't take our guns away, we would have killed them over there because we were so goddamn mad. Here we go into Liverpool. And here they are, these wet white women are going out with black guys. That's what really made us mad. Oh, we were madder than hell. We were ready to kill all those black guys. And I think we would have killed them too. They didn't take our guns away. They really pissed us off. And uh, so, uh, uh, so that's, uh, we never got into any, they, they never, I don't know, they never, uh, we never got into any fights or anything like that. I don't recall ever getting into a fight or anything. I don't even remember getting into a fight with any, with any of the guys I got with. And, uh, uh, but, uh. So you were telling us about your Paris adventures. Yeah, well. Yeah, we were there the day after, the day after it was liberated. You met this woman over there? I met that woman, and she was very ugly. I was looking for something, naturally, I'm a man, and uh, she was so ugly, I said, no way, woman, I am, not, I am not going to stick my penis in you, you know, so she did something else for me, okay. six, it cost me six bucks. And, and that uh, took care of you for a and, and the thing was, I was with two other guys, mm -hmm. and the two other guys got intercourse, they both ended up with syphilis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really glad that I met her. <laughs> so While you were over it. there, were you communicating back home? Ah, uh, nope. Nope. I was a terrible speller. A terrible speller and a terrible reader. Uh, a writer. I never wrote. And I remember I remember those uh, B.E. Uh, B. Uh, Christmas things. <laughs> I, I had a list of all my neighbors and some of my neighbors, you know, and I sent them, I made the mistake of sending them all the Christmas thing, Merry Christmas and that, and they were all sending me letters back home. I never sent one letter, not one, because I did not, I, 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 I was a terrible speller and, and writer. I, I never, my sister wrote, wrote back, she thought I was dead. Uh, and I uh, wrote back to the Red Cross and they said, where is my brother? And, uh, and uh, the, yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I just didn't I, I just didn't write to anybody. Yeah. You know? So they said, No, I'm still alive yet. So uh, So what happened to you after Paris? Well I remember we dug a hole. Uh you know where Lindbergh uh, dropped down in his airplane uh, outside of Paris. That's where we dug our first hole. We dug wow. it over at the airport over there where Lindbergh dropped his airplane. Right. I remember, I knew right away with that. I said, oh man, this is where Lindbergh, Lindbergh uh, came down on this airplane over here. And we dug a hole over there too. So we dug lots of holes. And then after that we went to, I remember uh, going through the Siegfried line. Uh, the engineer just blew a hole right through that baby. And the stupid Germans didn't know what to They didn't know we were smart enough to blow holes through it. And, uh, and then that, that's, and and we went right through. Uh, that's like I say. I never, I never, I never, I never got into any confrontations or shooting at anybody. You know, there was nobody ever that. 
there was one time I can't I I really don't remember where we were. I don't know if we were in Germany or not, and uh, I don't know if it really happened to me, but. Uh, we knew one thing when you heard a German airplane, you never, during the nighttime, you just watched them. You never, you never shot at them. You shot at them, you drop a 500 bomb bomb, you come back and drop a 500 bomb bomb on you. So you never shot at any airplane when you saw them at night, never. And, uh. Did you, uh, experience the old buzz bombs? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> when I was over in England? Uh -huh. Yeah, I used to watch those buzz bombs go over there. Yeah, none, none of them. A little That's scary, you, know, you never know until it stops where it's going to drop. I don't think I ever knew that much about buzz. Oh yeah, I heard about them and all that. I never, I don't think I ever heard one of them that close enough to ever, you know, see the damage they did, you know, mm -hmm. to England. Because I never got in, I never got into London, never mm -hmm. got to London, and that's where they were hating all around there. Yeah. So I never saw the damage it did. And now all the towns we were in, all the towns where we got there, everything was leveled. There was nothing on there. The, uh, I remember at, uh, at St. Lowe, uh, I was uh, out looting, and uh, I came into this, it, it almost looked like a garage to me. I was really surprised that it was up there. And uh, uh, what comes out of it but a German police dog. And he was, oh, he was ready to tear me up, and I was ready to kill him, too. I was ready to get my, my, my M1 and kill him. And... Uh, I thought, what is, why is this dog so vicious? He's trying to kill me, bite me, I don't know. I thought, what the hell's going on? And then I start listening. I thought, what the hell is that noise? And uh, so I go in this garage or whatever it was, and uh, here they are. It was a female. She had puppies. <laughs> oh. There was a litter of puppies in there. <laughs> and like, you know, and you talk about a dummy. So I go back to my outfit, and and then it dawns on me after I left. I said, "You dummy! You should, did you feed him? Why did you give that that, that poor animal something to eat?" I never even never even dawned on me that I should have gave that that uh, that uh, that German dog uh, something to eat. Never did. And I just moved on, and uh, I never saw I never saw a dog after that. What never happened after that. Paris? Now you must have moved on. Oh yeah, we were always moving on, and I think uh, oh. Yeah, we were in uh, Belgium. I remember going through uh, Belgium. Any uh, experiences Liege, in Liege. Uh, Belgium? No. No. Oh, that's we uh, we uh, we stayed overnight. That's when I told you I was on the Red Ball, and uh, we stayed overnight at uh, at a uh, nun's place. Uh, there was a. Uh, uh, I, um, I don't know if it was, well, we're a nun state. Convent. Nunnery. Nunnery. Convent. Yeah, convent. And uh, we slept there overnight. At one of the, I slept on one of their beds. And uh, that's the first time I ever saw. And just like I said, I got a haircut over there. But, uh, uh, I thought the world was coming to an end. <laughs> the, uh, and then uh, I think we went, uh, th then we went on to Germany. And then I, oh, I you did get to Germany then? Oh, yeah, that oh, told great. you. Oh, yeah, I told you we went through the Siegfried Line. That's right. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the thing was, is I don't remember where I was in Germany, you know. I don't remember names. Uh, Ah, I remember some of the rivers we went across. Uh, uh, the Rhine, I remember the Rhine River. Uh, I don't remember some of the other. Uh, I, I just remember the, the final one was the Elbe. Met the Russians at the Elbe River and shook hands with the Russian. And he, the first thing he wanted was, he, have you got a watch? He wanted to watch. And. Uh, and uh, I never had a watch. I remember I had a watch, and the dang thing never did work, and I sent it back to my sister. <laughs> Too bad I didn't keep it. I could have sold it. <laughs> but anyhow, that's all he was interested in. Now, was, was, was Hitler dead at this time, by the time you got there? Uh, well, really, 
uh, I'm afraid that uh, that's how we absolutely knew nothing. I knew no, absolutely nothing what was going on. Really? I knew absolutely nothing. No. That's all we did is we do our job. I never, uh, we used to listen to the radio. I think maybe we listened to that one woman tried to, you know, give us a hard time or something like that. But otherwise, we used to listen to music on, the, on, our, on our radio, and I don't even know how much of that. We just, we were in the war. Uh, and so all we did is just do, do our job, go from one place to another. How long were you in Germany? And then we slept underneath the trucks, slept underneath the trucks at night, uh, only a blanket, only a couple of blankets. And, uh, uh, it, it got cold there, didn't it? Yeah, I never, I can always remember, I can see myself in this, uh, in this uh, beautiful wool sweater. I remember that baby's uh, wool sweater. And uh, I wear that wool sweater all the time. And my pants were wool. Uh, and uh, never got my feet wet. I remember those, those boots we had, leather boots. Uh, I never got any wet feet. Well, I was always in the truck, you know. So, uh, uh, how long were you in Germany? Do you remember? Well, first we went to Belgium and Luxembourg. I remember being Luxembourg. We went through Luxembourg too, and uh, uh, and then we went to uh, went through the Siegfried Line into Germany. Uh, the problem is that I don't remember any of those towns except for going across some of the rivers or the, uh, you know, uh, Dusseldorf, maybe Dusseldorf or some of those towns. Otherwise, what was, what was there in there? You know, everything was level for crying out loud. There's nothing up there for crying out loud. There's nothing really to, oh, I remember in, in, in uh, France, uh, that's right too. I remember when I was in Paris, I saw the Eiffel Tower. It's quite, quite a bit of Paris I saw because we rode right through everything that was in, you know, I couldn't believe that all this stuff was still up yet in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Paris is about the only place I ever saw any buildings. But uh, So where were you when the war was over then? I remember well, the last place we were at was at the Auburn River and, sh and then we went to, uh, 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 we went to Marseille, France. And uh, we could never figure out what, what in the world we doing tomorrow. And we were up on the hill, up on the hill. I can remember our, t our tents and that were up on the hill, uh, up on the hill, just like a bluff again, up on top of this bluff where we were at our tents up there. And uh, Marseille, France, we, I used to go down to, I went down to Marseille, France <coughs> by myself. And uh, I was always going places by myself. And uh, went into Marseille, France. What a dirty place that was. And I had, I think I still, I still think I had my gun. And went into Marseille, France. And uh, I, I wasn't looking for, and I, I don't think I was looking for any women or anything like that. I don't remember finding anything in Marseille, France. I think there was not, I don't even know if there was anything to drink in Marseille, France or not. I can remember some of the other places when we were in Normandy. Drinking, uh, drinking that good uh, 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 apple cider. And that stuff was good. Uh, in fact, that's what the Germans used to put in their flashes. Was uh, was uh, uh, apple cider. <laughs> uh, it was fermented, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I can remember. We were in this one place, and. Uh, Oh, that was over in England. Was that in England? What place? This one guy. Oh, he, he drank some buzz bomb juice. Uh, and no, he didn't drink. Did he drink buzz bomb? Juice? No, he was so drunk. He was so drunk. He came back and he took a poke at the at the colonel, our colonel. <laughs> I don't remember who the kid was, and uh, and the colonel didn't do anything to him. He knew he was drunker than hell. And so they didn't do anything. But I remember some. I remember, uh, remember some of the dummies were so dumb that they drank buzz bomb juice. And uh, otherwise, I can't remember. 
Anyway. How did you feel when you found out the end of the war had finally come? I don't know if I was relieved or really, I really don't know. I, I tell you, I wasn't scared. I was, it was, it was, I had a good time. I try to tell you, I, I enjoyed it. I was 19 years old. I thought that was an adventure, I really did. I, I don't I, the only time I was ever scared is when I had to walk for my gun. We were always, in, we always had our 40 millimeter or our, our half track in that, dug a hole. And it was always, we always had to walk quite a distance. We always sat in the house. Uh, we, and there was, must have been houses still then because we, that's where we used to go back and sleep. And, uh, and then the, ba the bad part was at night is, is going from that house to our gun by yourself. And that was the scariest it was. I mean, come on, it's blacker than hell out there. You know? And then besides that, you're in the war, for crime's sake. You don't know what the hell's going on. I remember there used to be, I remember that one time uh, we had uh, the Germans drop paratroopers in back of the line. So who do they, but some of the cooks, one of the cooks did not want to, uh, so I remember some of the cooks over there, they were scared to death, absolutely. They were older guys. They were absolutely scared to death. They did not want to go to the war. And uh, so, so, they, so they drank, they ate lots of cheese. They ate a whole bunch of cheese so that uh, they, they you know, got bound up and all that stuff. They found out about those guys later. I heard about they found out they, and they, off they went to the front line. And uh, uh, they didn't uh, pr prove anything. And, uh, uh, I forgot again. So from from Germany, you must have got shipped home then, eh? No, no. That's when we went to uh, uh, Marseille, France. Okay. We we're up on that hill, and this is where that guy again, that one private, that one private that I know of, he found he found a woman in Marseille, France, a doctor's wife. He come back with gold coins. You've never seen gold oh. coins. He he was he was you know what he was doing to her, young an old woman, you know what he was doing. And he come back, I couldn't believe that guy had gold coins. Well he showed them to me. Gold coins. I thought, my God <laughs> And uh, that's the first time I ever saw gold in my life for crave sakes. I can remember that uh, and otherwise, I get along with my corporals, get along with the sergeants. I never got, I never had any problem with anybody. I did what I was told. And that was about it. So you got shipped home from Paris then, or Marseille? No, I, in Marseille, France. Uh, well, we were trying to figure out what, just what in the world are we doing in Marseille, France? And uh, and then we finally found out uh, our next assignment was Japan. We were going over to oh, Japan. Oh, you were among the group oh, yeah. that was going to go over oh, there. Yeah. Their, their oh, yeah. Their next job was we were going over to Japan. We were going over there. <laughs> I never really knew it until then. Thank God. Oh. I thank, thank Harry. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> yeah. So what happened then? And then we shipped home from there. So that got canceled, eh? Yeah, that canceled up. Right. That was the last place I was at. So where did they ship you to? New I had York? a chance. I had a chance to go into. Uh, 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 that beautiful place where that uh, uh, that uh, you know that one woman that got married and all that, and she married some of those guys in in that part of France, southern France. Uh, Monaco. Monaco. Yeah. Monte Monaco. Carlo. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had a chance to go there, and I never did. I went to Marseille, France instead. <laughs> but. Uh, that's about it. So when they shipped you home, where did you come back? To New York? You talk, you talk about, and we came home on an Ellis, one of them stinking lousy Ellis, down in a hole. Down in a stinking hole. <laughs> That's a nice place to be found, eh? But, you know, just like all GIs, what the hell, didn't make any difference. Get the old, get the old cars out and get the old dice out and shoot and all that. Well, it'd take you about a week, week and a half? Oh. Gee, I don't know. I think about That's it. That's terrible. That's I can terrible. remember. I can remember when we were going over there. I remember we zigzagged all over the place. You know, they're coming the U-boats, worrying about the U-boats. We zigzagged all over the place. You'd be down in the hole. I, I, 
I remember the first, uh, we, we left Marseille, France, and this one guy, we weren't even, we, we were just on the boats and he was already seasick. <laughs> <laughs> This poor guy went off on a, we took him off on a stretcher. He's never got rid of the seasickness. <laughs> he was so tired and also dehydrated and everything else that they took him off. And, uh, and, and this big guy over here, uh, this guy, big guy right here is Polish. We were in a German bunker, in a German bunker. Why don't you hold that up so and, we can, uh, hold that up oh. so I can see it, yeah. Uh, it doesn't make any name, difference his name, uh, but uh, we were in this German bunker, and uh, where was it in Germany? And uh, the Germans started throwing eighty eights at us, and uh, he lost his cool, and uh, he was he was really going out, out of it. I mean, all of us are scared to death, you know. What the hell, eighty eights? You know, like eighty eights <laughs> down on you, but. Uh, after a short while, they, they quit. And uh, uh, I mean, you know, the funniest thing is his son came over, uh, came back over and, and they talked to some of the guys, and I met his son. Nice son. His son was a, in fact, his son was a lieutenant or something like that, I think it was him. But uh, I never, I, ne I never divulged any of that stuff. With the hell. It just happened, it happened. And I never, I never saw any of these guys again. Never. Never saw them. They all, they autographed this baby, they're all autographed. And, uh, yeah. Never saw any of Stan Clare and all those guys. So, where did you go when you came home? Uh, I think it was over in, uh, uh, Trying to think. Was it here in Detroit? Oh no! No, oh, I'm trying to think of Washington, or I mean, where did, where did we ship from? I'm trying to think. New of York, where... usually. No, 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 no. We did not ship from New York. <sighs> a lot of guys came through. Camp... Ah. A lot of guys came through New Jersey, Camp Kilmer. No. No. Was it uh, Washington? It wasn't. Where was that? It was not any of those. I'm trying to think of what, where that was again. That we shipped. Uh, sh uh, I thought we shipped out of the same place where we left or something like that. Huh? Philadelphia or Baltimore? No. no. Norfolk or. No, I thought Massachusetts. Oh. Massachusetts. Yeah. Oh. We landed back in my. As far as I know, we landed back in Massachusetts. We shipped out of Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Where did you go from there? I went back home. Here? In Detroit? What's that again? What? In Detroit? Is that where you came back? Oh. Oh, after the war was over? Oh, yeah. Dave, did you get your job I don't back? Remember, I don't remember coming back. Well, I'll tell you. Now, listen to this. Uh, uh, I don't remember if I came... If I came, uh, I think I must have came in from that train, you know, the train station. And uh, you talk about a disappointed man, a disappointed, a disappointed guy. I came back from the war. <laughs> and I was never congratulated by one person ever. <laughs> I was madder than hell. I said, God damn, I went through a goddamn war and everyone said, no, no, nobody ever said, thank you, Norm. Shit. Oh, I think I was so goddamn mad. My son-in-law is the only person that ever said thank you, Norm. Went through a war and never got thanked by nobody. It pissed me off. It still pisses me off. Yeah, we got 15 minutes. I survived all these years, so maybe and I came home and married a, married a beautiful woman. I've got wonderful kids in that. Did you go back yes. to your job uh, uh, at Hudson? Well, uh, I had, uh, uh, he ended up being my brother-in-law, George Beamish. Uh, George and I used to, uh, that, uh, George used to drive my car all the time, that 42. 
we went all over and they, where they wore out my car and uh, I paid for all the, I had the job and I paid for the gasoline and uh, we went to the damn display we went to we went to uh, Niagara Falls just just to take a drive there and uh, on the way back it snowed you've never seen so much snow and George was such a good driver he would just plow right through that stuff and I remember we uh, came back and we were at uh, what, but the Blue Water Bridge over there? Uh, what's the town? Port Huron. Port Huron. We were in Port Huron. And uh, I remember I took took over driving then. I'd be damned if I didn't get into an accident or something like that. <laughs> it was a mild accident or something like that. But Could you uh, hold up some of your pictures? This is the one that you had. Yeah, this is, this is the one that was... Uh, this is the one that was taken over in England. And I don't remember where that, uh, I don't know whether any of these things have any of that on there. Okay. okay. This, yeah, I, this one is from uh, May 29th, 1944. It's, it's, that's what's written right here on yeah. Monday when it's, it was taken, but there's no town listed. Yeah. No. Just the towns of the. Uh, I, I do have some of friends, the the guys that know exactly what town we were in. Okay. Could, but, you, yeah. could you maybe point to yourself in that picture? Oh sure. Let me see. I'm right. I'm right there. Okay, just hold your finger there. I'm gonna zoom in as far as I can here. There you go. Okay. Very good. Yeah, that's definitely taken over. In fact, we used to play ball over in that. Some of those for baseball, for softball. What What about in here? Do you know where you are? Ah. Uh, Oh yeah, sure. I shake because I have Parkinson's disease. How long were you in the service then? Three years? Three or? years. Three years. Well, just turn that one around so we can see the sure. whole group and... I'm trying to, uh, well, they're pieced together like that. Uh, now, is that your... This was our whole out, this is our whole out, well, the, there's a, it's still, a, there's still even another, another part oh, over in, boy. another part over in here, so. I mean, you're talking about a bunch of guys. There's even another. That was your yeah, whole was, outfit, and where was that? Home. That was taken. Um, this is in North Carolina. This is a North Carolina. Yeah, right. Camp David, North Camp Carolina. Okay, North Carolina. so that's right. that's basically your graduating class from boot camp. Right. 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 Gotcha. Right. Okay. All right. What else you have? What are some of those little snapshots there? Here's uh, baseball. Nineteen uh, uh, that July fourteenth, nineteen forty-five. That was over in England. Can't remember exactly the name of that town. That was me batting. I had a pretty good physique then. Digging lots of ditches and all that stuff. Okay, let's yeah, yeah hold that one up and that was me hitting the home run. <laughs> and that's your story and you're sticking to it. Sticking to what? Sticking <laughs> to your story. Yeah, I'll look at you. <laughs> They're all true, they're not lies. Okay. <laughs> well here you're you're playing with the children, is that it's it? the same play. Is that it? I don't a, remember. It's like you're playing with kids at a playground? Well, now, see, that could have been some of the other ones. No, I don't remember those kids, really. I'm afraid I don't remember that. No, I don't. Well, I had to be in England, yeah. No, I'm afraid not. I really don't here, why don't you that. hold that one up so we can see it anyway? Cause... There was a backstop and everything there. I imagine we made that backstop. I imagine that's what they did. Mm -hmm. I really don't remember. Okay. And that one there, the snowman, that was in Germany. And that, that there is a, yeah, the castle. Let's see, let's castle. see the... 
This one here is a cat. You have to look very carefully. The, the snowman had a penis. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Why isn't this? There we go. Okay. And I don't know where this. I don't know where the. I don't know where that was in Germany. I know it was in Germany. He made the snowman. But the snow never. You know. And besides that, that jacket. Oh, see there. I got that sweater on again. See, I didn't have a jacket. I think I had a jacket, but I always say I love that sweater. It was a wool sweater. That baby was nice. Where did you get that from? The United States Army. It was an army thing. Yeah, these other guys don't seem to have it, right? Well, I was so, I was used to, you know, I was born and raised in Michigan. I know what the hell winter was in Michigan, so. It was just like Michigan again back mm -hmm. back over there. Just like Michigan weather, right? In Germany. Never got that cold. Well, at least some guys thought it was very cold. It didn't bother me that much. But, uh, what yeah, other was, pictures you got? Uh, Well, some, the thing with it is some of these are, are not very good pictures. Oh, the, this one here is in Fort Fisher. This is in the, this is Jacob Bianski, my corporal, Jacob Bianski, and this is back again. And uh, but uh, and th this one here. Now this one here. I'm not too sure about this baby. Uh, I don't know if this one. We're buildings. We're building something. I don't exactly know where, where we're building this. I don't know if we're building that and, and where. I haven't looked at some of these pictures in a while, huh? Well, this one here throws, I, I see, I see uh, Naso. I know Naso. He's the Italian guy. We were building, and I don't know where, where we were building those. I don't, I don't remember that. Let's turn around so I can zoom in on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I don't remember where this was. Okay. Here are some of the army, army reunions we had. How big a family did you have, Norm? <laughs> Seven. Seven? Five boys. Five boys and two girls. Wow. Well, Are they all located around here? Uh, I have a daughter that in, lives in Oregon, Bend, Oregon. And uh, no, and the rest of my kids are right here. Let me see, where else do I have any? Oh, my, my son, my oldest son, uh, Kenny, who works at Cape Canaveral. Uh, uh, oh, Cocoa Beach, he lives in Cocoa Beach. And... Uh, Otherwise, my daughter lives not too far away. How many grandkids you got? Uh, ten grandchildren. I bet you don't get to see them enough, eh? No, I'm afraid not. <clears throat> well, I have. Well, I, uh, yeah, no, not that much. But, well, I have a wonderful wife, you know, and I have, a, I have such a wonderful place where we're staying, that, you know, nice people there. So, uh. You know it is. Uh, I don't know. I just don't think about it that much, really. Mm -hmm. So I don't think otherwise bad or good. You know. So I'm just glad I'm healthy. Yeah. And hell yes, and I have a wonderful wife, and that's such a great. Hey, I'm very thankful. How long have you, been, have you been married? Uh, fifty-six years, as far as I remember. Fifty-six great. years. Right. Yeah. To the same woman, right? I would never think of anything else except her. I fell madly in love with the first time I met my wife. She was worked at a delicatessen. I came back from the, uh, well, I used to work in the old neighborhood. And uh, I remember coming back from the war. My dad sold the house uh, over on Troster, kicked my sisters out. And, uh, and my dad, the, the thing was, my dad forgot that he had, he had my brother, my brother Bob. My brother Bob had epilepsy. And uh, so he found out that after my brother Bob, that he had to take care of my brother Bob. 
and uh, my brother Bob would likely drink of that too with him. So uh, he thought up a nice thing for my brother, how to get rid of my brother Bob. He found some women that said that uh, Bob exposed himself in front of them. And uh, when I came back from, from the war, I said, I stayed with my sisters. They slept in an upstairs flat, and I slept on a rollaway bed. And, uh, and I came back and I says, well, where, where's my brother Bob? He's in Eloise. I said, where, where in the hell is Eloise? So I went out to Eloise. Eloise is a sanitarium. And I mean, a horrible sanitarium at that time. I remember, or I remember going to see my brother. I went into this one. He was in there, and the guys were in shackles and all that stuff. And I said, oh, boy, oh, was I mad. What the hell is my, and I mean that, I can remember that. And I said, what in the hell is my brother doing in this place? This is a nut ward. This is nuts. You get my brother the hell out of here. There's nothing wrong with my brother except he has epilepsy. And they took him in, and they took him out of there and put him in a place with other guys, you know, and slept in the bed. And then he got a job as uh, pots and pans. Uh, my brother, the epilepsy, has, it finally did get to him, you know. It affected his brain. I remember my brother being very smart. Uh, mechanical drawing, I remember him doing mechanical drawing and that. And I really, him and I slept together, so I hated my brother, really, when I was younger. You know, him and I just, and besides that, he was a sissy. <coughs> and, uh, but then I finally, uh, I finally learned to, finally learned to love my brother. And, uh, I know my, I know my brother loved me. <laughs> I saw my dad die, I saw my mother die, I saw lots of people die. But I remember my brother Bob, I learned to love him. <laughs> I used to bring him over to my house, and I remember my kids saying, Oh, here comes Uncle Bob. <laughs> I used to go go see him at uh, go see him at, uh, East, at Christmas time and then bring him home. I remember that Ford Rotunda. Remember that beautiful Ford Rotunda? Poor son of a stupid people burned it down. Oh, I can remember that and going out there and yeah, going out to see my brother out there. Yeah, those are lots of good old days. I was telling my wife. I said I can remember my brother Bob. I was going out to see my brother Bob at uh, Riverview and. Uh, he had a nice, nice place. He deserved it. It was a nice place in Riverview. They treated him, they treated him so good. But he still smoked cigarettes. So it's camels, camel cigarettes. Oh man, they were strong. And uh, I remember I went out to see him. I was driving my car, and some son of a gun. Came, I, I don't know if I was. I don't think I was in the expressway then. Uh, came in off this road that I was at, and uh, it was a truck, and. Uh, uh, he must have had rock, rock in between the dang dual wheels, and that rock came flying out. What does it do? Goes right smack dab into my radiator. Put a nice hole in my radiator. I'm going to see my brother. And I ended up not going to see my brother. I ended up with a guy fixing, putting the, fixing my radiator, and it cost me quite a bit of money. Wow. I never did see my mother. I was madder than hell at that. Mm. But uh, those are some of the things that happen in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Kraut, this tape is just about finished, about so I just want right. to thank you very much for the interview, and I thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. A little late, perhaps, oh, but I right. do thank you for yeah. your service, yeah. and I thank you very much for telling us your story. I was glad to give that story, you know. Thank I'm, you very, I'm very much. Proud, I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of my country, too. I love my country. You know, there's a lot of praises going on in the last couple of years particularly oh, yeah. right. that are recognizing a lot of the boys oh, like yeah. yourself belated but still praising them for all the things they did yeah well you know the